I will grant you this. To try to get our heads around the triune God, God that is expressed in three unique and separate beings with distinctly different purposes, well, it's just difficult for our human and finite minds to consider. Jesus, who came to earth, died and rose again, is actually God. Pastor Tom Cullen explains further in this program of Hope Today. We are so glad you have joined us. What a privilege to be part of your day today. Thank you for coming along on this journey. By the way, we want you to know that you can listen to past programs through our website and through our Facebook and Instagram pages. We will tell you how to get there at the end of our program. Let's get started with some wonderful music performed by gospel musicians as Mac Wigfield leads us. Thank you, Brian. Welcome to Gospel Music on Hope Today. Today, we're going to be talking about that's right, about Jesus. Nobody quite like him. Let's hear that from 11th Hour. There's an urgent cry among God's people. No longer can silence remain. We've got to take a step beyond the steeple. To reach a broken world in need of grace Only Jesus saves Only Jesus saves He's the light that shines In the darkest place He's the healer, redeemer The name above all names He's the life the truth, the way only Jesus says. To the lonely soul whose heart is breaking, your hope feels so shattered and lost. The peace you're looking for has been waiting Right there at the foot of the cross Only Jesus saves Only Jesus saves He's the light that shines In the darkest place If that's true, and Scripture assures us that it is, then he's really all you need. He's really all I need. Here's the Clark family. I don't need silver And I don't need gold I don't need the things world to satisfy my soul, but I need Jesus, and all that He is, He's my salvation, He's why I live, 
He's all I need when trials come. He's all I need when there's nowhere to run. When I'm in trouble, caught in the storm, He takes care of me. He's all I need when my time comes. When I cross that river, when life here is done. He fought the battle, the victory's been won. He's all I need. Well, I don't need fortune. And I don't need fame. I don't even care if anyone down here even knows my name. Because I know Jesus. The master and he's my everything he's all i need when trials come he's all i need when there's nowhere to run when i'm in trouble caught in the storm he takes care of me he's all i need when my time comes when I cross that river, when life here is done, He fought the battle, the victory's been won. He's all I need. He's all I need when trials come. He's all I need when there's nowhere to run. When I'm in trouble, caught in the storm, He takes care of me. Cross that river when life here is done. He fought the battle, the victory's been won. He's all I need. He fought the battle, the victory's been won. He's all I need. And because Jesus Christ is Lord of Lords, he deserves must have the first place. Listen to Dave Boyer. Put Jesus first in your life. Let him take the burden of sin away. Put Jesus first in your life. Let him handle all the problems that stand in your way. You have searched in vain for that something. Now you don't want that something you found. Put Jesus first in your life and turn. is full of changes each day rearranges the things that count for you things that mean so much today can mean much less tomorrow even if your dreams come true ah but there's someone I have found a rock to build your life around Put Jesus first in your life Let Him take the burden of sin away Put Jesus first in your life Let Him handle all the problems that stand in your way You have searched in vain For 
that something No, you don't want that something you found Put Jesus first in your life And turn your life around. We've been examining the names of Jesus on Hope Today. We've discovered that no one name can fully describe all that Christ is and means to us. Each name is significant, for each name describes an aspect, an attribute, and a work of Christ. Is it any wonder that Paul, a follower of Christ in the first century, said that he was called to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ? If you think about it, it's amazing that we can know Jesus. He's been revealed to us through His Word, and as we study and meditate and allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives, our love for Him deepens and desire to serve and tell the world about Him grows. So we come to our study today with anticipation as we discover that Jesus is the firstborn over all creation. Here's Redeemer Church of the Shoals with, I know whom I have believed. I know not why God's wondrous grace to me he hath made known no why unworthy Christ in love redeemed me for his own but I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is a I know not how this saving faith to me He did impart Nor how believing in His word brought peace within my heart But I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that He is a In the small town in which I live, there is a cult whose members sit near the post office and give out magazines and offer Bible studies. I've gotten to know some of these folks. 
They're nice, but seriously deluded. For they believe a heresy which is as old as Christianity itself. A heresy which Paul, a follower of Christ, sought to respond to in his letter to the church at Colossae. At the heart of this heresy and modern-day cult on the street corner is a challenge to the supremacy of Christ. So, in the New Testament book of Colossians, we read that Jesus is not a demigod among many, but sovereign over all. Nor is he an angel created by God to do his bidding. He is not minor, but major, not below or a part of all things, but above and beyond all things. He's not equal to the other gods of the earth, but far above and beyond. Listen to what Colossians chapter 1 verses 15 to 17 says about Jesus. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He's before all things, and in him all things hold together. After reading that, we could ask, is there anyone or anything greater than Jesus Christ? And the resounding answer of Scripture is, no. Christ is supreme, and to view him in any other way is to dishonor his name, belittle his credentials, weaken his authority, discredit the testimony of Scripture, and lessen his role in your life. Joshua Aaron exalts our Lord in You Are Holy. As for me and my house, we'll serve you, Lord, lifting holy hands and worship. No, we will not bow down to the gods of man. We will worship the God of Israel. You are holy, holy. There is no one else like you. You are holy, holy.
When members of the cult in my small town hear that Jesus is firstborn over all creation, as we read in Colossians chapter 1 verse 15, they assume it means that Jesus was the first thing God created. But that interpretation makes no sense given the next verse which says, For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth. Logically, Jesus can't be the first thing that God created if Jesus is the one who created all things. No, the title firstborn over all creation does not refer to the order of creation, but to preeminence. The text is telling us that Jesus is above all things, supreme. This interpretation is strengthened not only by the context, but by the fact that in the Old Testament we read of how King David was the youngest in his family, the last born. Yet God says in Psalm 89 verse 27, I will appoint him my firstborn, the most exalted of the kings of the earth. Obviously, firstborn here does not refer to birth order, but to preeminence. David was God's appointed ruler. He was preeminent over the kings of the earth. The word firstborn in scripture then rarely has anything to do with birth order and everything to do with preeminence. So if we substitute the word preeminent for the word firstborn in our text in Colossians, we understand the meaning of this title more clearly. Colossians 1 verses 15 through 17 then reads, Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God preeminent over all creation, for by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. He's before all things and in him all things hold together. So in the words of St. Augustine, Christ is not valued at all unless he is valued above all. The Belonging Co. sing the truth in Jesus Over Everything. He came from glory, took on flesh to save the lost, grace and mercy displayed upon the cross, our redemption. He's the hope for all mankind, one name over One name over everything Jesus over everything He reigns forevermore Our song for all eternity Jesus Christ is Lord Can rival our resurrected King in one moment. He brought death to its knees. All the power, all in all authority, to one name over everything. Yes, one name.
hard to believe that a hymn so well loved and requested would not have a known author and story. Our hymn today, Just a Closer Walk with Thee, has only speculation of probable origin. It gained national popularity in the 1930s, and it is widely believed that this song predates the Civil War. Some African American histories recall that slaves were heard singing a song about walking by the Lord's side as they worked in the fields. If in fact this song can be attributed to one of the spirituals, it would join many other African American songs where the authorship is shrouded in mystery. Yet these spirituals brought much comfort and hope to those who were deprived of freedom as they walked through their trials in life. In 1940, Kenneth Morris arranged and published this well-loved song for the first time. Although there are several versions of how he found the song, one version is found in Horace Clarence Boyer's book, How Sweet the Sound. He states, and I quote, While traveling between Kansas City and Chicago, Mr. Morris got off the train at one stop to stretch his legs. While standing on the platform, he overheard a porter singing some of the words to Just a Closer Walk with Thee. Not thinking much about it, Morris boarded the train and went on his way. The words and melody of the song kept repeating in his head, and he knew he had to learn the rest of it. At the next stop, Morris got off the train and took the next train back to the previous stop. There he managed to find the porter, who was persuaded to sing the song while he copied down the words. End of quote. One thing is for sure. We continue to find hope from these words, and our gratitude is extended to whoever wrote it. It has been translated into numerous languages and recorded by many artists, including Elvis Presley. May you find blessing as the Ben Spear Singers sings their version of just a closer walk with thee. Testament book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 15, we are told that Jesus Christ is the firstborn over all creation, meaning that Jesus is preeminent, supreme. The text goes on to say that his preeminence is proven by the fact that in him all things hold together. 
Do you hear that? We often think that this world is held together by the stock market. If it crashes, our world would crash. Or it's held together by the delicate balance of power among the world's nations. If one side tips and becomes weak, the whole world will come crashing down. But listen, while those things may have an impact on your quality of life, all of them are dependent on Jesus Christ. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He's that preeminent, that supreme. I recently read of linear accelerator scientists who have discovered a complexity they never dreamed of as they have discovered particles for which they cannot invent enough names. And one thing they are consistently discovering is that there is some strange force, a cosmic glue, they call it, that holds everything together. The Word of God tells us who that glue is, the Lord Jesus Christ. Given all this, the question we must ask is, is Jesus preeminent in your life and mine? For many people, Jesus is prominent, but not preeminent. So ask yourself, does Jesus have first place in my life? Is he the center around which my life revolves? As one biblical commentator, Henry Garippi, points out, to some people, Jesus is nothing. To others, he is something. Then there are those to whom he is everything. O oh Lord, may we all be a people to whom Jesus is everything. Here's Twila Paris with Enter In. The holiest of hearts, the holiest of rooms. We had no right to come inside until we found the tomb. Now we are not alone, and from your gracious throne, you gently call us home to enter in.
The big question that you may be asking at this point in our program is, so what? What does it matter that Jesus is preeminent over all things, supreme, having the privileges and rights of the firstborn? Well, if you're a Christian, it makes all the difference in the world. It means that Jesus is not some demigod, a messenger sent from God to tell us how to live, but he is God himself who came to earth and lived among us and gave his life as a sacrifice for our sin. He is truly able, as Colossians 1 verse 13 says, to rescue us from the dominion of darkness and bring us into the kingdom of the Son he loves. For in him we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. You see, because Jesus Christ is preeminent, you can know you are redeemed, purchased out of one kingdom and put into his kingdom through faith in his sacrifice. You don't have to guess, wish, or suppose. You can know. I liken it to this in my experience. My father used to own a successful garden center chain in the Toronto area. As a young man, I could go to one of these garden centers and pick up any annual, perennial, tree, or shrub I wanted for my home. Not just once, but all the time. And every time, I wouldn't have to pay a dime. I didn't have to pull out my credit card or cash. I could simply take it. I knew it was mine. Why? Because of something in me? No. It was because I belonged to my father, and in this company, he was preeminent, the boss. So for you, if you belong to your heavenly father through faith in Jesus Christ, your eternal destiny is assured, your peace is rooted in him, your joy is absolute, and your assurance is steadfast. Because Jesus is preeminent. So the worship initiative with Shane and Shane sing, Because He Lives. God sent His Son. They called Him Jesus. He came to love. Heal and forgive. He lived and died. To buy my pardon.
Thanks for listening to Hope Today. The story is told of how in 1893, the World Exposition was held in Chicago and people came by the millions to see the exhibits. Among the features was a World Parliament of Religions with representatives from the world's religions meeting to share their best points and perhaps come up with a new religion for the world. At the same time, there was an evangelist in Chicago by the name of D. L. Moody, who saw the exposition as a great opportunity to share the good news of Jesus Christ. He rented out all sorts of venues, even a circus tent, to present the gospel. His friends wanted him to attack the Parliament of Religions in his presentations. But he wouldn't do it. Why? Because he knew Christ was above them all. He need only present Christ as preeminent, supreme, peerless, and people would respond. And they did. By the thousands. As the song goes, let us lift Jesus high. There's a popular poem by William Ernest Henley entitled Invictus, which is Latin for unconquered. 
It ends with the famous lines, I am master of my fate, I am captain of my soul. It's been an inspiration to many, but in reality, it is a fantasy. Stubborn resolve does not make us masters of our fate. Given our study today of Christ's preeminence, how much better is the poem by Dorothy Day entitled, Conquered? Out of the light that dazzles me, bright as the sun from pole to pole, I thank the God I know to be, for Christ, the conqueror of my soul. Since his is the sway of circumstance, I would not wince nor cry aloud under the rule which men call chance. My head with joy is humbly bowed. Beyond this place of sin and tears, that life with him, and his the aid, that, spite the menace of the years, keeps and will keep me unafraid. I have no fear, though straight the gate. He cleared from punishment the scroll. Christ is the master of my fate. Christ is the captain of my soul. Here's Matt Meyer with Run to the Father. I've carried a burden For too long on my own I wasn't created To bear it alone I hear your invitation To let it all go I see it now I'm laying it down I know that I need you I brought to Father, fall into grace. I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend. So I run to the Father again and again and again and again. Condition had a plan from the start. Your son for redemption, the price for my heart. I don't have a context for that kind of love. I don't understand. I can't comprehend All I know is I need you I'm brought to the Father Fall into grace I'm done with the hiding No reason to wait My heart needs a surgeon My soul needs a friend So I run to the Father again And again and again consider surrendering as a victory at all. But in this case, surrendering to Jesus Christ is victory because he loves you and has your eternity in his hands. He demonstrated that on the cross that we celebrate every year at Easter. Thank you, Pastor Tom. You may want to hear this program or a previous program again. You may want to share a program with a friend. You can do all that by visiting www.lightandlife.ca. Once again, that is the word light, L-I-G-H-T, the letter N, and the word life, L-I-F-E. On our website, you can find our link to Facebook and Instagram. Would you send a note to your social media friends so they too can listen to Hope Today? Through our website, you can send Pastor Tom and our team a note. We would love to hear your story. Hope Today is produced at Straight Path Studio. This is a listener-supported ministry. 
We look forward to being with you and your friends next time for another program of hope. Until then, keep looking ahead. Jesus is coming again.